Hey everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. This is the second part of the preservation series. And this one I thought I would talk about my absolute favorite form of preservation, and that is fermentation. Um, now when people think of fermentation, they usually think of using yeast, aka Saccharomyces cerevisiae, to make alcohol. But there's actually a lot of different forms of fermentation, and they're, they're all rather interesting, but most fermentation you can divide into three types. There's Saccharomyces, which makes alcohol, there's lactobacillus, which makes lactic acid, and there's uh, acetobacter, which makes acetic acid. And so you often hear them as lactic pickles, um, vinegar pickles, acetobacter, and then of course booze. <laughs> but uh, I'm specifically going to be talking, because I, I think that using Saccharomyces cerevisiae to make ethanol, that's really a different thing that's less about preserving food and more about home brewing and there's nothing wrong with that but it's not what I'm gonna talk about uh, instead I'd like to talk about lacto fermentation and uh, acetic fermentation so those are two really great ways of preserving a lot of things and if we look historically and I mean like even prehistorically uh, lactobacillus is more common and there's a good reason for that you don't usually have to add anything to it because lactobacillus and different variants are kind of everywhere um, for example when I make uh, sauerkraut I don't add lactobacillus to the sauerkraut I I cut up cabbage and I add salt uh, lactobacillus thrives in high saline environments and that's part of how easy it is to make it because the things that usually compete with lactobacillus don't like high salt environments so that's how you get away with it so you just add salt water and any kind of flavoring agents you want, like like herbs and spices if you want, to the diced up cabbage, and that's it. Like, that's all you have to do. Hot water, salt, put that in a jar. Don't seal it too tightly because it is going to be a living thing. The lactobacillus is alive and it does uh, have a form of uh, uh, respiration, not, not the same as what we think of, but, you know, it does take in components and exhale without lungs components waste products in other words and as a result if you seal it up like hermetically it's going to explode uh, but that's really all there is to it when it comes to lactobacillus and that's why lactobacillus was used by everybody like historically that that preserved food um, the Vikings for instance they would actually take lactobacillus uh, that they normally use to preserve uh, yogurt well, preserved milk in, in the form of yogurt, uh, or skier, as they would call it, which it, there is some subtle differences, and I actually prefer the taste of skier, personally. But anyway, getting a, getting off topic, uh, they would actually take that and smear it on plant products, and from there it would colonize it. So what you'd end up with is uh, lacto pickles that are really strong because there's also residual components from the dairy, like on the vegetables. And that was a really fast, easy way, and cheap, <laughs> easy way to uh, just preserve vegetables using what you already use to preserve dairy. So just, uh, I, I highly recommend if you're interested in fermenting things, get started with lacto-fermentation because it's very easy. Sauerkrauts are incredibly simple to make. They're one of my favorite things to make for that very reason. And when it's cold outside, when it's snowing on the ground, for whatever reason, uh, I guess growing up, making it, I mean, that, that makes me want sauerkraut beyond end. So just, uh, yeah, that's, that's one great way to preserve things. Now let's talk about acetobacter for a minute. Um, vinegar fermentation, in other words. So vinegar literally kind of means like bad wine or soured wine. And that's because the best way to make vinegar is to take all the steps that you would if you were making alcohol, whether that's making beer in malt vinegar or more likely wine, uh, hence red and white vinegars, which are pretty much just made from wine. And, and the chief difference is whether it's white grapes or red grapes. And then white vinegar, of course, is... Uh, enhanced by just getting rid of excess water that comprises it so you end up with something that's so strong that it can be a cleaning agent and is a good cleaning agent but taking vinegar which is very cheap it's not the easiest thing in the world to make but you can absolutely make it but it, at the present moment it's it's a lot easier and cheaper to just buy a crap ton of, of vinegar but by adding vinegar to different uh 
vegetable and plant compounds, you can effectively preserve them because very few bacteria can survive in such an acidic environment, except for Azetobacter, who is responsible for said fermentation. And it results in a vastly different taste. Like lactopickles and, and vinegar pickles taste completely, completely different because of the things that have happened to them on, on a, a chemical, on a molecular level uh, are, are vastly different. But the two things they have in common is that they resist other bacterial colonization and fungal colonization, which is why they last a long time. Well, the only distinct difference between the process is that you have to add a, a vinegar compound instead of just water, in the case of lactobacillus and salt. <clears throat> and then the other big difference is that in the case of vinegar pickles, you do want to seal it up. Uh, you can get away with having vinegar pickles that are open. There are people that do that. There's open air markets with vinegar pickles, but it's not a breathing thing. And as a result, it's something that you could definitely benefit from having it hermetically sealed. In the case of canning, what people do is you you literally put it in a hot water bath, and then once you take it out, it creates a vacuum because you know although the the superheated air is pushed out, and then it has trouble getting back in, and as a result, it vacuum seals. So those are two distinct differences. Lactic pickles tend to maintain a living lactobacillus culture, and so it's alive and, and you have to treat it as such. Whereas vinegar pickles, there, there are absolutely acetobacter pickles that have some live agents, but not a lot. It's a very uncommon thing because it's more likely to get colonized by some bad stuff, and also simply because it's so easy and safe to hermetically seal it once it's it's got the right pH. So uh, that's all I got. So bottom line is pickling is a great way to both preserve food and change it molecularly in a way that it's kind of, it changes the nutritional aspect of it, um, usually for the better. Um, but at the very least, it's nice just to have cabbage in the winter that's, you know, soured. So anyway, like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.